Today I'm going to give you a brief overview of how the BPS launch system works. Uh, this is the new launch pad here with a mock-up of the relay rocket. Inside the rocket here is the Zener flight computer. This is brand new hardware. The flight computer is twice as powerful and half the weight of the previous system used. So I'm really excited to get this thing in the air. We'll turn the rocket on now. Um, you get the little blue power light and then we're going to power up the launch pad. So right now we're in um, a standby state and if you look really, really close, you can see it on this screen, but you probably can't look that close. So I also have a pad remote. Now that they're synced up, you can see it says standby there. The next step here is to check our connections. We have three different computers running in the system, the remote, the launch pad, and the rocket. And we need to make sure that all of them are communicating reliably. We can check this with a quick turn of a key. Okay, so it works. Uh, this may not look like much, but what's actually going on is there's a wireless transmission between the pad remote and the pad computer, and the pad computer converts it to a separate protocol, sends it up to the launch tower, which communicates via a hardwire connecting to the rocket. We'll simulate two different scenarios here, and the first will be a holding scenario. I have the launch clock set to about 20 seconds, so we'll begin there. You can see the pad remote starts counting down, as well as the launch pad. They're in sync, too. Now let's say there's danger somewhere on the field, someone is interfering. I hit this switch, and things have obviously changed. So what's going on here is the rocket is recognizing that we're in a hold. You can see the little purple light on the rocket. The pad is obviously recognizing that we're in a hold because it's blinking and making a bunch of noise. And so does the remote. The remote holds our time, which is T minus 11 seconds. And so I know when I'm ready to release the hold, if that's where I want to be in my count. If I decide that the scenario is unsafe and I want to recycle back to 20 seconds, or more likely 5 minutes or 3 minutes, um, I can get out of that hole and reset back to 20 seconds. So now we're out of it, I reset, and we're at 20 again. So the second scenario is an actual successful launch. Obviously we won't actually launch the rocket today, but with that said, let's start the count again at T minus 20 seconds. So there it goes, and at T minus 10 seconds you'll also see that the rocket turns on a bunch of lights. This is just a quick test of the auto sequence. There it goes. Now we'll hold here for a second. As we're holding here at seven seconds, one of the last things that will happen on the rocket is this gantry will pull back and disconnect the hardware connection for the rocket. Right before then, the rocket's going to send some of the last values from the accelerometer, the gyroscopes, the barometer, basically every sensor on board to the pad computer. Both the pad computer and the rocket will be going through data from all of these sensors on board until this connection is severed right before launch. So now we'll release the hold and drop back in around 7 seconds. 3, 2, 1, and that's it. That's how the rocket launches, obviously without the actual launch part. In its current state, the launch pad's operating at about 40% full functionality. This video is just a test of the architecture that will be used in the system. As always, for more information, you can go to www.bps.space or visit at Joe Barnard on Twitter. Thanks for watching.